I think it's possible that I've already done this before, but I wanted to maybe once again, maybe for the first time, talk about how much I cannot stand children's Bibles. Uh, children's Bibles, the, the kinds of things that are not actually Bibles. I'm not talking about like the, you know, teen study Bible or something like that, although that, you know, has its own issues. Uh, I'm not talking about a Bible that's simply designed in its configuration, in the way that it's, you know, put together in its binding and its cover that are made specifically for children so that maybe it's easier font or something like that. Uh, what I mean is the actual, like, you know, the children's Bible where it's Bible stories, but it's not the actual Bible usually. And it's simply, uh, you know, got pictures and things like that to teach kids about the Bible. Now, uh, I am sure that there are many kids who have benefited in some way from these over the years because God is a God who loves to use even that which does not, uh, is not great, put it that way, those, those things that are not perfect and far from it and still use them uh, for his good, uh, for, for our good and for his glory. And so that is something that I think uh, probably has happened. So this is not me saying that it's impossible for God to use something. However, um, just because God uses something, God used Judas. It didn't make Judas a hero. And so uh, that, that doesn't mean that uh, these things shouldn't be critiqued or thought of more critically. And in this case, I think that children's Bibles have done uh, incredible harm to the way people read and understand the actual Bible. So here are my, uh, you know, primary issues. Number one, there is, you know, the issue of violating the second commandment. Um, God has commanded us not to make images of him for use in worship. Uh, when we are reading something that's purporting to be the Bible, uh, it is something that we should be doing worshipfully. And if there are pictures of Jesus, I think that this can, this is uh, very problematic. And I know that's not, you know, uh, believe. I know there's probably people listening to this that don't uh, hold to that particular view of the second commandment. And, uh, you know, we can discuss that sometime, but um, that is uh, important to me. I think that this diminishes the transcendent glory of God, uh, even in the second person of the Trinity, when we try to uh, make these images of him. Uh, number two, instead of just printing the actual words of God, right? So that the Bible is the inspired word of God. It's breathed out by him. Uh, instead of just reprinting those, almost all children's Bibles just rewrite these stories. And so you have a new author trying to take the characters of the Bible and put into these stories what they think they should be about. Instead of taking the actual word of God and using that as the basis. So I, you know, I want my kids to learn the real Bible. I want them to know the real Bible because that is the actual word of God. Um, this, is, this is not something that you get if you're reading children's Bibles. Now, I'm convinced that most people who have any grasp of the Bible can tell the Bible stories as well as a children's Bible. So if the issue is that you think, well, we need a way to communicate stories of the Bible to children, number one, I think the Bible is capable of doing that. Number two, I think that parents are capable of doing that for children and Sunday school leaders are capable of doing that. Now, it might be a little bit more work for some people instead of being able to simply read um, the prepackaged story that comes from these children's Bibles, but I think it's possible. But here's what really gets me about children's Bibles. Um, if you look at, for instance, the what I believe is probably the most popular children's Bible, um, the I think it's done by Zondervan or you know Zondervan Kids. Um, it's you know if you saw it, you'd probably recognize it if you grew up in the church. On the cover of this children's Bible. If you look at it, there's a picture of Jesus in the middle with children around him. And then you've got other characters from the Bible. And they're all smiling and standing there happy. And in the back, next to David, 
is Goliath. The, the character Goliath is standing with everyone else, the apostles and Jesus and prophets, standing on the front of this Bible, smiling. Okay, you have missed the entire purpose of that story. You remember that that story ends with David killing Goliath, right? Using a sling to take him down and then going and chopping off his head in victory over this Philistine that hated God. But here on this children's Bible, he's on the front smiling. Now, I think this is analogous to the way that most children's Bibles handle the Bible itself. They make everything into something that is light and frivolous and cheery. This is maybe, you know, one of the many reasons that uh, people grow up today, even in the church, don't have any fear of God. They, they see God as like their homeboy, their, their friend. And uh, that's it. Instead of having the kind of fear and trembling and working out one's salvation that we're supposed to have. Instead of seeing and understanding that God is a consuming fire. But part of that probably comes because we have Bibles, or what we call Bibles, that we give to children. And they have Goliath all happy and excited on the front of them. It takes the uh, important side of the Bible that speaks of God's judgment and his wrath and discipline, the, the wickedness of sin, and it makes it into a light, joking matter. And that is incredibly dangerous, and I would say incredibly dangerous to the souls of children. So again, is it the worst possible thing that you could give your child a children's Bible? Of course not. But my challenge would be to anybody that listens to this, if you're going to uh, give your, if you want your child to know the Bible, to know the scripture, why not just give them the real Bible? When they can read, they can read it. If you have, you can get audio Bibles, you can let them listen to the actual Bible. If you're worried about certain portions of the Bible being a bit too extreme for them, you don't have to, uh, you know, play Ezekiel chapter 16 to your child when they're really young. But play some of the, you know, notable stories. Play the bits about creation. Play these, you know, different elements that you want them to hear. Play the Gospels so that they hear regularly the words of Jesus. Um, read to them the real Bible. Kids can understand this stuff. I'm also convinced that we try to dumb stuff down for kids, uh, but we really don't have to completely dumb it down. Yes, we have to communicate in a way that you know is is helpful for them, but I'm convinced that if we communicate in a, at a higher level, they will grow to match that level. They will come to at least hear it. And especially when kids are little, the, the main point is to get them to memorize these things anyway. They're not at a point even in their brain development where they can start to really logically grasp what is going on um, with these passages a lot of the time. And so, you know, you're not, you're not trying to uh, force your three and five-year-olds to do tons of critical thinking. What you're trying to do is get them to hear and become acquainted with Jesus through his word. And I'm convinced that if the primary way that we do that is simply with uh, children's Bibles, that they will not actually come to know the actual Jesus of the real Bible.